morning everyone we're going to be working in this really exciting art project this morning we're going to be doing a beautiful sunset picture of West Southampton a little rowing boat sitting on the river with a few scattered behind you've got a lovely sun setting behind the camera so you get these golden reflections of soft light candy floss clouds and it's going to be great we're going to be working in acrylics so to start off with i'm going to go through the colors and a few of the brushes before we get to there because it's acrylics it's particularly difficult due to the drying time being so fast i would recommend that you have some fluid retarder along with a fluid retarder or slow dry medium depending on which brand you're going for a stay wet palette is particularly handy you can see this one's had a really hard life they're good. You don't have to get a Daler, you can get a Frist one. There's all manner of different versions out there, or make your own. There's a few good examples on YouTube on how to do that. Now, let's give you a quick rundown of the colours you're going to need for this project. We've got, first of all, a lovely cadmium red with a rich crimson red to give us the lilacs. I've got some yellow ochre and some lemon yellow and some cadmium yellow for the oranges, for the sunsets and some soft browns and then to finish us off we've got some ultramarine blue some cobalt blue and some cerulean blue again beautiful blues beautiful greens there's a lot of those in this image you're going to need a little bit of black and of course always handy a bit of white so onto the brushes let's see what i've got here um, a selection of brushes you're going to need a few big brushes depending on how big you're going to paint the painting I've got here is going to be relatively large, so I've got a number 10, a number 8 and a number 6 in the larger heads, all flat, gives me a lot of leeway with lying down colour quickly, and then I've got a 6, an 8 and a 0 for the finer pointed end detail of the spectrum. So, paper, you could be working in cartridge paper if you wanted to, or you could be working on canvas or maybe even acrylic paper if you're feeling very wealthy today. I've got a piece of canvas that's just been primed and ready to go. Before you get started on this project I would recommend that you have a charcoal pencil and that first of all you plot down a border that's the correct aspect ratio to the reference image. You can see here um, I've pretty much doubled up my reference image but it's up to you. There's a few different ways of working at aspect ratios. Look up my video and that'll give you some top tips. Quick and easy. So to start off with, I have looked at my basic image here. I prefer having a physical image rather than a screen image, but either will work. And I've noted out the halfway points of the height and the width of the image. And I've done the same on my canvas. This will give me some basic anchor points for when I'm drawing it down. Now I've got my charcoal pencil and first of all I'm going to draw in a rough horizon line. Now this line is fundamentally the top of the grass reed over here as it goes in line with the road. Then below that I've got the bottom of the reed. If I wanted to measure I could just take that measurement with a ruler on my fingers Go bum, bum, double, that would do it because I know everything's doubled up. Then after that point, I am going to do something which is a little bit more radical and will make life a lot easier for my accurate drawing. I'm finding the midpoint of my picture and whatever I do on the picture, I do on the canvas. So that means that that's my midpoint. Now immediately that will show me that the boat here, which is the main focal attention in this artwork, needs to go slightly more to the right when I come down to do that in. That's always very helpful to know and will give you a much more accurate picture. So to start off with I'm going to bring in this slight arch of the reeds coming round. I'm holding the charcoal pencil towards the end and then I'm going to roughly draft in my boat which be kind of something like that. Wow. Slap that in there. Slap that up. Bring in my side. Then I get this gorgeous reflection, which I know is sitting on that right hand side of the guideline that center pierce the canvas and bring that in there. 
So, hey presto, I might find that I need to lift things up. This is just the initial thought process. Don't worry too much about being perfect at this stage. I'm looking at this drop. So, ultimately, yeah, I'm a little bit long, but you know, nothing major. Then I'm going to draft in these boats over here to the right. So, I'm looking. That one finishes where the back tail end of this boat starts. That'll give me a rough angle. I should have a boat in here, a boat in here. So there's five of them, one. And then there should be another one in here. Give me a rough perimeter. Then I've got a head that just drops up here. I've got a little bit of woodwork to draft in for access to my boat. Okay, some mooring sticks. I guess there's probably a much more professional name to them than that. And I've got my beautiful little tree just over here and just slap it in over there and create a rough, a very approximate boundary line for that tree. Now if I take a measurement of that tree with my fingers and I put it on my picture, I know that this bit of sky has to be slightly bigger than this bit of tree, which it is. So that means that my eye is in and everything should roughly be in the correct place. Definitely a bonus. Now at this stage, then we're taking away the charcoal pencil and I'm just going to get a piece of tissue. Okay, I'm going to take my charcoal pencil and my piece of tissue and I'm going to refine this drawing a little bit more. It'll make life a lot easier for when I'm painting. are particularly tricky on these curves. Look at the negative space, plotting things in between to make sure that you're getting the correct angle. Look at this gorgeous pattern of the slats. That will exaggerate the contours and make the painting more realistic. I'll give you a good guide to how to shape that outside edges. There you go, that section coming down. We've got the reflection which is just kicking in here. Particularly interesting because you get to see the bow at a completely different angle to how you would normally. And we've got a grass reeds coming back here. Got some grass reeds coming up in here. That is the edge of our bow. So, just coming up there and we'll get some of those a little bit of grassiness down here um, we've got the pole which is particularly prominent and helpful to give us a guide on where the boat should be so you can see that darker turquoise boat that should be kind of coming up here okay and then we get this edge over here
brown boat and goes with the white boats you can see tucking in behind uh, then the grassy bank as it comes up your little seat sitting in over here and we've got some mooring poles being reflected the grass in here and then we've got the top of our reeds Come along over there. We have books in that horizon line. The bush coming up. We've got some trees poking behind. Like so. And we've got our tree. down give it a slight angle it's coming off the edge of the image jetty grass poking out here but then you can see just a little white boat tucking in now the white boat hits the bottom of the reeds just peaks up so we've got our basics sketched down um, I'm going to use a tissue and a potty rubber just to clean it up a little bit I'm going to take my putty rubber, take out my excess guidelines, take out my grid ultimately because that is what I drew down the, the middle of the canvas. You're looking at cleaning everything up that you don't need, removing any errors and taking off excess charcoal because the charcoal if you lay down a white even in the acrylic, you're going to find cross-contamination. Right. You have only what you need to survive as a painter. Don't worry if it gets a little bit messy, you are going to paint over the top of it. The main problem you get with charcoal is that it can blur into things. That's why using a tissue. I'm just going to go over it and take off the really dusty part of the charcoal. Not too much or you'll end up losing everything that you just sketched in. But you should have like a faint ghosting. Okay, like that. Then we get to do the exciting stuff, serious painting. Woohoo! Okay, so I've laid out my palette. I've got my cerulean blue, my ultramarine blue, my cobalt blue, my lemon yellow, my cadmium yellow, my yellow ochre, my crimson red, my cadmium red ivory black and titanium white. Um, I'm going to work from the sky down, um, I'm going to do the sky first and then I'm going to do the water reflection of the sky because the colours are going to be quite similar and then I'll paint around the boat. Um, that will mean that we're leaving the greens and the boats to the second phase. So to start off with I'm using a big brush and I've got some fluid retarder. I'm going to mix some white in with a little bit of Cobalt blue. I'm going to mix a little bit of cerulean blue in there. A little bit more cobalt. Which I think is a little bit too light, so maybe, yeah, it's better a bit of 
ultramarine just to bring it down a little bit. So you can see these patches around here. Then I've got some white and then I've got some golden colour. So I'm going to make a decent quantity. So I'm going to start patchworking this blue in. As it gets closer to the top, it gets more intense with the blue. I'm very loose, I'm probably going to end up painting over a lot of this and playing around with it for a while, so I'm not too worried. Then I'm going to wash my brush out, take off any excess from the tissue. Take some yellow ochre and a blob of white. A little bit of cadmium just to golden it up. Increase the white quantity towards the lower sections of the clouds. I'm going to bring these lovely soft golden clouds in. going to be some lilacs I'm going for in a little while but I'm just working slowly and then as I come down to work at the bottom sections just above the horizon line I'm going to take some of the white and use a little bit of a lemony yellow and a little bit of cadmium I'll run that along the bottom brush it strikes nice and lively so if you're conducting to a piece of music fresh water, allow it to settle down and I'm just going to work in a little bit of lilac as well while it's still drying. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and some crimson red and mix them to get a really lovely lilac. It's quite a powerful lilac but I'm going to take a load of white Very gentle pressure on your brush. Settle. Brush, got a rag, and then I'm just going to work on this bottom section. And because I've got all the colours pre made from before, it's a lot easier to lean up there a little bit. Uh, I'm going to take this and first of all dab in some of that blue for the blue sky. 
if you've run out, remember it's nice and easy. A little bit of each, really. A bit of cobalt, not too much, powerful stuff. A bit of cerulean. bit too much cobalt and then we slap in a tidy touch of ultramarine to lilac it up okay I'm looking at the bow I've got a little bit of blue just dashed in down here um, and I also have blue cutting off that reflection so that kind of comes up and there's gonna be blue that comes up here of course I'm going to slap in some puffy blue, um, white clouds in a little while. Got a tad bit of blue down here, a little bit over there, a bit just here, which is a bit more bluey, actually a bit more kind of turquoisey blue. So I'm going to up that ultramarine blue. Okay. Then it's going to fade out as it comes over here and to the back or towards that lemony yellow to soften that out that's a bit full on actually but hey do that later at least with acrylics it dries quick so you can get rid of it easily brush my brush I'm going to grab some of my nice soft golden sunshine yellow ochre cloud puffiness Start whacking some of that in. I might need a little white for that. Get a bit more going. So, it's a bit more orangey around here, but we're going to work into that, so there's no major problem. And it's like the lilacs are a much stronger tone just down here on the right. I've got some puffiness just here, and I'm going to just bleach out into that lemony yellow. Along there, I'm going to take it up. I'm going to take it into the side of the boat, knowing that I'm going to pull in some nice, soft, grassy weeds. I'm blending that in, and let's kind of hook around those boats, which I've got over there. And I'm going to grab a little bit of white, bring in my puffiness for my clouds. There's one here. There's there's a few little kind of dabby puffiness about <laughs> and a little bit more probably around here a little bit of white that comes up here and for that orangey tone so for the orange I'm going to add a little bit the cadmium with a yellow ochre I'm going to throw that in down here glowing sunlight speckling on the cloud reflection I'm going to take some of that soft blue and just feather it in a bit more because it's a bit kind of harsh I want it to be a smoother contrast, not such a jump visually. Then I'm going to take some of my crimson and my ultramarine and make a gorgeous plummy. So if I want it plummy, I need more of the crimson, less of the blue. You can see it's quite plummy down there. I'm going to throw that in down here, and I know it's strong, I know it's strong at the moment. I'm going to soften up in a little while. Okay, so if I add in the complementary colour of purple, which is, just trying to work it out in my head, um, yellow, it should knock it back a little bit, which it does.
now by adding in that complementary colour you're taking down the saturation not the colour um, it should remain purple if you end up going brown then you've added too much it's gone horribly wrong right I'm wiping my brush so it's dry and then I'm just smoothing out the edges and I'm going to throw in a little bit down here so I can see and I need to go really dark some of it is a little bit more of a kind of dark tone and it's very dark down here so I'm increasing the blue in that purple blue will make it go far darker than the red has the capacity for I'm thinking of brush marks and messing around with the colours at the same time stronger blue just down the side of the boat because of the shadow work I'm going to add a little bit of water to my brush and I'll smooth that out it's better to add too much blue down that left hand side that way you can put the reeds on top of that. See there's a little bit of a green, so I'm going to take some of the yellow and the ultramarine to make that reed green. brush marks
And to tie up that, I'm gonna just throw in a little bit of golden orange up here. Yeah, and a little bit of water. Just smooth it out. Putting it in a little bit of water just to give it a little bit of orange glow on the horizon. You should hopefully have something like that. 